This is Dior. Welcome back to Dior. I'm Celtic Templar, and welcome back to another Q&A video. And today, y'all, uh, we're actually going to be doing a, well, Q&A on this day, like I promised. Hopefully, we had the time to get it done in November, and luckily, we do. So, yeah. Now, I want to put this out here. Uh, first, I'm going to be going through the previous uh, Q&A video, because apparently there were comments on there that a bunch of people left that uh, were about questions, so I'm going to go with it there first, then I'm going to go into our latest post, and as well also in our uh, final post, that, of which I left out a couple of days ago. So, uh, yeah, now I want to put this out here, we're doing this recording on Friday, and we had to do it, show it off on Saturday, because one major reason I have other videos I gotta get doing, but, y'alls, Every one of y'all's comments matter for this Q&A video, and the fact is, uh, I want to put this out here, a lot of y'all that uh, ended up missing the post or whatever on our, co on our community area, here's the thing, if ever you miss it, just leave a comment here if you have it for, a Q for the next Q&A, because one, I always go back to my previous video, because one, I see a lot of times y'all like to leave comments on there for the next Q&A video. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, why don't we get right into the Q&As, shall we? Okay, Famed God gives me a question. Here's a question for the next Q&A. How does one start learning about Celtic culture? Oh, that's actually a uh, really, really good one. Uh, Famed God, this one is kind of actually weird, but the thing is there are different variations on how you can start it off. One way I would normally do it, uh, well actually the first time I ever got started in Celtic culture was mainly because of Scotland, because of my ancestors who were from Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, so, uh, pretty much I first focused on them, but you could actually start it off pretty much from the original Celtic culture, from the Hallstatt culture, or also some people start from the Ten, but I would highly recommend first starting off from the Hallstatt, that way you can understand of its evolution and as well its spread of its culture into the Ten culture and so on and so on. So, I highly recommend starting off with the Hallstatt, rather than just go to Scotland and Ireland and Wales, because one, even learning that without that Celtic culture does take some time, because one, you first gotta learn of the culture there, then you're gonna end up having to well, uh, then spent countless hours going behind that. So, I the one way that's probably faster, but does take a little bit longer, still a long time, is, uh, well, going from its beginning, from the Hallstatt culture, to pretty much, well, modern Celtic culture. And the fact is, uh, learning that is kind of uh, necessary in order to understand, well, the culture of the Celts. Otherwise, you're gonna end up looking around like an idiot, like I first was, when I tried to first look up Celtic culture. So, uh, yeah. The high, I highly recommend first taking a look at the Hallstatt culture. It will take years and such, but, hey, if any of y'all have a lot of free time, I highly recommend checking it out. First starting off with the Hallstatt, then pretty much to the modern day. So, yeah. Okay. Famed God asks, also, what song do you use in your intro and outro? Uh, <laughs> those are actually aren't songs. In fact, yeah, I asked him as on of what video he was talking about, and he always and he stated on this video itself from the last Q and A. Uh, those weren't. That wasn't music or anything, that was actually me blowing a horn, or, well, uh, my original audio when I blew a horn, lucky for me, I saved it. Unfortunately, the audio detail I once had, apparently because, one, the I didn't do it on the horn I have right now, it was uh, when I was actually meeting up with my old buddies from my Celtic and Viking reenactment groups. The first horn blow is from a Viking horn. The second horn blow at the very end of every video, like you'll pretty much end up hearing, 
is that of a Celtic Harnix. And that is, I actually, it took me like at least three tries just to get the correct audio for it, so it's confusing, I know, but that's actually how it is. But, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, Pewds asks, do I celebrate Luganashka? I can never pronounce this. Uh, I don't know why, but you see, this is why I call it the Celtic Spring, or... Uh, or, uh, there are different variations of what I call this, but sometimes I actually call it the Festival of Life, as it's known in the Celtic culture. Which, Luganashta, which, this is a type of Celtic festival, it's supposed to represent the coming of the warm months and such, the harvest months and all that. Uh, yes, I do celebrate, and also no. One, I do somewhat celebrate this type of holiday, but the problem is I cannot perform the rituals. One, the traditional st uh, style is the fact that, one, it's actually stated that Celtic maidens, or in this case Wiccans and such, the females actually perform the festival. And the reason being, it's because of fertility. So, I can't exactly perform the rituals. I do celebrate it, but I... Uh, can't perform the rituals. I need a female <laughs> priest to help me out with this. So, yeah, it's sacred. Otherwise, it's stated that fruits would die or, uh, worst off, your, uh, pregnant wife might not be pregnant. So, yeah, it's, uh, I know, it's weird. It's an old ritual. So, yeah. Okay, Celtic's Perspective asks, what is my favorite? favorite movie? Oh. Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> he's one. He's gotta be very pacific with us, cause, um, uh, cause I have to put this out here, he, uh, cause there are different movies I do like, most of the time, if it's based in history. For example, uh, like if it's a movie based in, during a time of antiquity, definitely the movie Gladiator. If it's the medieval period, it's most likely the uh, movie, uh, the, uh, probably the movie Outlaw King, for example. However, if it's based in Viking period, the most badass one, I would have to say, would have to be the movie The Northmen. I don't know why I like that one a lot. Uh, but if it's supposed to be taken during the time of the early colonial period, definitely the Patriots, for some weird reason, I have no idea why, that or the last of the Mohicans, then there is the movies that are based on the 1800s, definitely the movie The Alamo, because one, this film was ba was made by Texans, for Texans, so yeah. Uh, but if it's based, like, in World War II era, that's a tough one, because uh, I do love Saving Private Ryan. It is still one of my favorites, even though there are some parts they got wrong. Uh, then there, but however, I guess if it's a difference between the Atlantic, because if it's based on the Atlantic theater, definitely the movie, uh, Saving Private Ryan, but if it's a, uh, movie that's based on the Pacific theater, definitely the movie Wind Talkers, which, yeah, I'm trying to get that, uh, part two out to y'all, but apparently because of YouTube with its idiot copyright claims, yeah, this is why I hate YouTube now. It's getting really stupid because one, they keep saying that this is copyright when in fact it's not. It's a review. So, yeah, I'm still trying to get it out, so yeah, we'll see how long it takes. Uh, but yeah. But when it comes to, like, say, the Cold War, like Vietnam or North Korea, uh, the Korean War, uh, that is kind of a hard one, because one, my original, the original ever first war movie I ever saw was the movie The Green Berets with John Wayne, and here's the thing, that is kind of one of my all-time favorite of Vietnam War films, because one, back then, they actually had explosions for real, not the CGI effect crap, that not, uh, which doesn't give good effect. Uh, then there's also the movie We Were Soldiers, which is somewhat based on a true story. They do get a couple of parts wrong here and there, but I'll have to do a video on that some time. Then there is the modern conflicts that we see in nowadays. Definitely would have to be the movie uh, Black Hawk Down. I don't know why. Uh, it's just the fact of these heroic soldiers 
trying to go back in, back in in order to save their comrades. That is definitely the historical backstory of what they were. So, yeah. Okay, Celtic birth sect of vests. What is your favorite pagan god? Um, that's a tough one. Uh, for Celtic culture, it's definitely the Morgan. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I literally don't know why. It's kind of weird. I guess she because she's the goddess of war and such. Uh, now, many people would automatically say, oh, but Templar, you're... When it comes to Norse mythology, you're definitely a... Uh, your favorite would be uh, Thor. Not exactly, because, one, Thor was mostly just a... Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if y'all have actually seen the video game Thor, uh, uh, like the video game Thor from, uh, God of War Ragnarok, but apparently, yeah, that's actually as accurate as Thor could actually be, just a guy who is perfect for killing giants, or Jotuns, and pretty much drinking. That's pretty much him. Uh, though... I had to put this out here, they kind of messed around with the story a little, as video games do. But, at least they tried their best to make it near identical. But, uh, for uh, the Norse gods, it would either be Tyr or Odin. Tyr being the a god of war. That's right, he is actually the god of war in Norse mythology. It's, however, it's also said that Freya is also a goddess of war, so it's kind of confusing, I know. But as well, Odin, he knows all, he sees all, so pretty much he'd be a good conversational piece for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but as well with uh, Greek and Roman mythology, uh, it's either Mars, which is the Roman variation meaning of Ares, which, reason being, the guy you yeah, don't want to get on the wrong side of. And the fact is, you got to actually feel his pain, because one, I can actually sympathize with him, because one, I really don't like his dad. Zeus is an asshole. he rather have sex with a million women rather than his own wife, because literally, I, this is why I don't like Zeus. There, now, many people don't even say, oh, but Zeus is cool. Yeah, here's the thing, Zeus is an ass. There, he has sex with more than millions of women, and in doing so, Hera can't punish Zeus, because one, that ends up getting, allowing him to get away with stuff. Uh, but the thing is, also, the fact I do like Hera, because one, she actually resembles the, uh, well, fertility, and as well, har the form of, well, uh, maidenhood and all that. Problem is, Zeus is just a complete ass. No, there is actually one of the Greek gods I love is Hades. Reason I love Hades is because one, you gotta sympathize with a guy. He and now before anyone starts thinking, oh, but Hades is the bad guy. Here's the thing: you gotta stop watching your Disney. You gotta stop watching that Clash of the Titans knockoff film, because one, Hades was never like that. He actually loved his family. In fact, he never betrayed them. And the thing is, he had his own kingdom in the underworld. And the fact is, he ruled as he did. And the weird thing is, uh, now there is a weird story between him and Persephone. Now many people say, oh, Templar, uh, he adopted her and it was rape. Not exactly. Some, histor uh, some form of mythological historians actually believe that it was, because there are different stories on it. Some variations that it was rape, some variations it was kidnapping, some variations actually state it was a planned kidnapping between uh, Hades and Persephone. So it's kind of weird, I know, it's kind of weird, but I don't know why, because uh, for some reason with me, it was the doom and gloom that got to me when I was very young, and Hades was definitely a judgment in other words, he judged the damned for their crimes, which I kind of like. So, yeah. Okay, HOA says, You once said that the Celtic and Norse mythology had a good explanation, and a lot of things in Norse and Celtic mythology seem to contradict things in Christianity. Can you explain that? Okay, I don't think I ever said anything like that. I, I do remember stating that Celtic and Norse mythology actually uh, ended up 
creating modern idealisms as we see in modern Christianity, such as one being the word hell, because one ate the original word, because one, uh, Christians didn't exactly have a word for hell, they just called it the underworld prior before meeting the Nordic mythology, and it was originally known in which uh, the original word of hell was spelled H-E-L based on Loki's daughter, who of which was the, well, observer of hell. However, it's kind of weird. Now, there are some variations onto which I had to put out here. Even when it comes to Celtic mythology, Celtic mythology gives a good variation on the form of modern Christianity, mainly with the fact on uh, purgatory, because one, Celtic purgatory was, well, the belief system that one, if you sinned in life, and if you go through life, you have to go through a certain amount of pain. Uh, a best example of this is in my video, The Celtic Hell, so I highly recommend checking that out. But the weird thing is, is the fact that one, Celtic culture and Celtic mythology uh, ended up influencing modern-day Christianity, so it, the way it can evolve. The same with Norse mythology. However, uh, Norse Christianity somewhat died off around the years of the 11th to the uh, 12th century, so there's not much evidence we can go on with that. In Celtic mythology, sadly, a lot of it's died off because of Henry the Fat, which is kind of one of the most asinine kings in English history, if you ask me. So, uh, yeah. Okay, Conan McKellenan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that anyway, uh, he asks, do you know where to get decent Iron Age Celtic clothes in for reenactments? Uh, yes, however, some of them, I, uh, have taken a look at many of them, sadly, majority of the sites, uh, majority of them are rental, or well, actually some, I should say, now, I highly recommend checking out Wolfland.com. Now, however, Wolfland.com has... Uh, they do have perfect Celtic attire. Problem is, a lot of times, their outfits are rental, sadly. So, that's kind of why I hardly ever go to them. So, yeah. Uh, another group I would highly recommend checking out would be... Uh, which, this one I highly recommend a little bit more would actually be... Uh, CelticWebMerchant.com, because one, they actually have a lot of Celtic attire clothing, which is very rare. The same could also be said about uh, CultOfAthena.com and as well MedievalCollectibles.com. If, no, dude, if you're uh, wanting to check it out yourself, I will leave links down below in the description, so that way you can find it perfectly, especially where I end up rather going. Uh, now, I do have to put this out here. A lot of the Celtic Sometimes a lot of the Celtic clothing is put into the Viking attire area, which I don't even know why. This is really too stupid. I'm not kidding. It's just put into the opposite area from where it was supposed to be. So, yeah. Now, I would also recommend just making it yourself because, one, sometimes even making certain clothing is almost impossible. So, yeah, I would highly recommend just making the tunic yourself, mostly. That, that's, that's me just saying that. But, uh, then there's also the fact on the attire system entirely. Uh, but if you want a good long variety, I would recommend Celtic Web Merchant. As I said, I will leave the links down below in the description if you want to find them. So, yeah. Okay, Black and Yellow asks, what are the different names of the saints in Norse and Celtic mythology? You said in one video that Michael or Gabriel had another name in Norse and Celtic mythology. Uh, yes, I actually did describe this. Uh, which, now, originally, though, their original names were different compared to what they are now since they were in Old Norse or Icelandic or uh, even in Old Celtic language such as Medieval Irish, which is no longer spoken. Uh, but the fact is, uh, it's a... I wouldn't exactly call it saints in Norse and Celtic mythology, because one, it would be uh, saints in Norse and Celtic Christianity. 
such as, for example, some of the Celtic gods had their names transformed into, well, Christian type names, or as a view, evolved them. And as well, the god Lu, for example, was transformed to mean God. Meaning, well, Lu was transformed into Yahweh, or God himself. The same could be said about Odin, who of which was transformed into God, the All-Father. Which is kind of a weird early Christian type form. Many Nordic Christians, for example, called Odin, instead of calling him Odin, they called him the All-Father, or Udfid, meaning the All-Creator. So, it's weird, I know, but that's how it is. But St. Michael and St. Gabriel, they were, by the Celtic variation, especially in Welsh, medieval Welsh, for example, it would have been known as Sat Miachel, or uh, Sat Gabriel, which, it almost sounds like the same word, but the problem is, Welsh, modern, now before anyone starts saying, oh, but Temple, I looked on Translator. Yeah, here's the thing. Modern translation of Welsh doesn't exactly mean anything to medieval Welsh. And the fact is, ancient Celtic Christianity is somewhat hard to find nowadays. The same with Norse Christianity. Uh, mainly because of one reason. One, the Norse Christianity started to die off very slowly. Which is kind of weird, I know. Then there is also to the fact on Celtic Christianity started to be destroyed, that's right, destroyed by this guy, Henry the Fat, who destroyed countless churches in the name for his Protestant church. It didn't help out to the fact that one, his daughter, Queen Elizabeth, did the same thing. And the fact is they ransacked hundreds of years, hundreds of thousands of years worth of history, treasure, and as well, even knowledge of these ancient Celtic saints. It's actually stated that even Saint Columba, who of which ended up being a saint in Scotland, they stated that wherever he went in Scotland, there was a trail of the churches. So it was known as the Trail of Saints. So it's variation in form. It's actually stated that the goddess Morrigan was later uh, translated to the Saint Con Carolina, or St. Carla, or some pronounce it as St. Moran. So it's very, it varies from region to region, depending on their language. So, yeah, it's weird, I know, but, uh, but as well, apparently, she took the place of Michael, apparently, as the guardian of warriors or the guardian of soldiers. I don't know how it translates, but it depends on where you were. So it's kind of weird, I know, but Celtic Christianity did somewhat survive a long while until one, the Catholic Church in uh, France, for example, ended up absorbing the land of Brittany during the time when Fran the Kingdom of France and Brittany somewhat united. And guess what? The Catholic Church ended up absorbing into there, and the Celtic Christianity somewhat died off, very slowly. Welsh Christianity, and as well, Irish Christianity, or you know what I mean, like Welsh and Irish Celtic Christianity, they somewhat died off because, well, of Henry the Fat. Scottish Celtic Christianity somewhat lasted a while, and did, but because of Protestantism, it kind of destroyed the variations on Christianity itself for the Celtic culture. So, in doing so, the Celtic Christianity somewhat disevolved to its form as we know today. So it's kind of confusing, I know. Even I can't explain it, so, yeah. Okay, Famed God asks, What is your favorite horror subgenre? Uh... Hmm. That's a tough one. I would... <laughs> yes, I do watch horror films. It's... because Now, I don't watch the modern horror films, because one, modern horror films, I don't like. They're really stupid. They're not even fun. They're not even good to watch. There's no suspense in them. I am pretty much of the old-fashioned type. I, uh... Because, one, I'm... 
somewhat big on the big old slasher film, especially from the movie Halloween. Yes, I'm a huge Michael Myers fan. Am I a fan of the most modern ones? No. I am a fan from the original Michael Myers Halloween film up until we get past Halloween Resurrection. Because after that, especially when you get to the Rob Zombie films, that starts going downhill real quick. Because one, Rob Zombie is not that very good with music, nor his films. I'm already going to probably get a bunch of hate speech from that, but here's the thing. Uh, I can't watch that idiot Halloween film that he decided to make without wanting to poke out my own eyeballs. So, yeah, that's... Or as well kind of wonder what the hell I just saw and probably even call a shrink to uh, pretty much start talking to Rob Zombie because one, that guy has some weird issues. <laughs> there as well, there's also the uh, type of horror stories or horror movie films that are actually based on real accounts from uh, historical uh, fiction, such as, well, fiction horror. Such as, for example, here in the Americas, we have the infamous, uh, well, Headless Horseman. And in fact, is that's actually probably one of my favorite uh, Halloween films with Johnny Depp and Christopher Lee all in one film, uh, which that one I love. And in such, yes, uh, Sleepy Hollow is still one of my favorite. Uh, then there's pretty much a lot of other ones. But the weird thing is, here in America, we don't actually make that type of horror scenario. We just mostly make idiot slasher films. Uh, which, here's the thing. The only slasher film I like is Halloween. That's about it. Others are just too stupid, or they don't even make sense. You see my point. Uh, but yeah, mostly it is of the historical fiction. For example, I kind of like to get into the story that has meaning behind it, that has history behind it. Because, for example, I would love to see someone try and make a film on the German vampire, or I think someone also made a film on the uh, Aberdach. I don't know if anyone's ever seen my video on that from our horror October films, uh, but I highly recommend checking them out so that way you understand what I'm talking about. Because, one, the old black and white horror films they got to me incredibly that awesome like. Especially Nosferatu. That one, definitely awesome. And as well, there's also to the fact on the uh, infamous Bram Stoker's Dracula. And no, I'm not talking about whatever the freaking hell we're stuck with now. I'm talking like the old stuff. Pretty much like, well, what we see with the <laughs> infamous Hannibal Lecter pretty much be a psychologist or a teacher and such, because that, that film I love. So, yeah, I love that actor especially, because when he's... that's my favorite. But, yeah. So, pretty much on a horror song genre, I would have to say historical fiction. So, yeah, that's just me, that's just me, because one, I don't know why, I just love that stuff to this day. Okay, Famed God asks... Let's see. Okay, this is probably a mistype, so I'll oh, pretty much, I guess, what he's trying to ask. If you could relive one point in history, what would it be? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I guess he's trying to explain, like, uh, like some point in history, not just in my own lifetime. Uh... I would have to say either one, the Battle of Bannockburn, for one major reason, it's the testament of Scottish independence, which of my ancestors. Two, it would have to be the Battle of the Alamo or the Battle of San Jacinto, which won Texas independence. Uh, three, would have to be the signing of the Declaration of Americans Independence. Uh, there would also be the, uh, number four would also be the fact on the Easter Uprising, or as well, the fight for Irish independence. Yeah, here's the thing. I am deeply into my Celtic heritage and into my Celtic homeland, so yeah. Uh, 
or as well, probably even back in April 16th of 1746. That's right, the Battle of Culloden. I would probably be there and probably try and direct, try and convince uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie to press his advantage on to London. Because one, if now you all know the story of what actually happened prior before the Battle of Culloden, it was a lie that ended up tricking the Jacobite army to turn around. And the fact is, they were only a few miles away from London. The fact is, I really wish... Because one, if I could actually have gone back in time, that is one thing I could have actually ended up doing to actually save the Scottish uh, culture, the Scottish clan system. Because one, then and such, we would pretty much... I think that's pretty much the Stuarts are still in power somewhat. It's kind of confusing. However, we would have a, a different Stuart family, so it's a weird civil war that kept happening for a long time. So, I would just pretty much get rid, or as well, I would even go back in time and pretty much kill, uh, probably, ex or execute, uh, Cromwell before he ever has a chance to be born. Now, many people want to make you say, Templar, that's kind of messed up. Here's the thing. Uh, if... Any of y'all know how bad Cromwell was to Catholics or Irishmen? You would pretty much hate him as much as I would. Or as well, I would probably even go back in time and stop Henry the Fat from ever doing his stupidity of destroying the churches and as well creating his supposed own church. Yeah, here's the thing, he was not a good guy. Or as well, I would probably go back in time and... Uh, Probably kill Adolf Hitler, but probably knowing one thing, there was also someone to er, there was always someone there to replace him. But I'll have to do a what if scenario. What if what if some of these things didn't happen? But I would probably also go back in time and probably stop Karl Marx from existing because one that guy did not help out anybody. If you know who that guy is, here's the thing. Take a look what happened with Russia. <laughs> so yeah, ah, uh, but that says me. That says me. I would do that in order to relive that events and probably, hopefully, change them. Uh, but yeah, sorry, Fame God, if I gave you more than one answer to that. Okay, Black and Yellow asks, if you could describe Southern culture in one sentence, what would it be? Oh, that's a... Uh... <laughs> that's a... Uh... Oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, he's got to describe, like, Southern culture a little more than that, because, one, there are different variations on uh, Southern culture, because, one, I'm from Texas. So, if he was asking about Texas culture, that'd be different compared to the rest of the South, because that's, yeah. So, in one sentence, I would have to describe Southern culture as family, headstrong, uh, pretty much... Crazy guys with guns who don't like the government. So, yeah. Now, what does that all mean to that? Simple. It means to the fact that, one, us Southerners, we don't like the government. And the fact is, we are rural country folk. We pretty much are our own, well, nation in general that pretty much like to have the government stay out of our business, which, that's how it is. However, if he's trying to describe have me describe Texas culture, uh, somewhat like that, but pretty much more of like secessionist movement, more like it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't exactly explain that in all like one sentence alone. But, yeah. Alright y'all, I hope I answered all y'all's questions as much as I could. Uh, no, I had to put this out of here, a lot of them were interesting and such, so yeah. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more. And if y'all, if any of y'all uh, missed the uh, post for the Q and A, just just a reminder, you can just leave your comments right here, so that way y'all can, uh, well, uh, I can have them answered by the next Q and A. Hopefully, probably by next year, we'll have one out probably in January or maybe February. Anyways, guys, I've been Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.